Hey, welcome everybody to the 40 Finance channel. My name is Jeff Beers. Today we're going to be digging into Apple stock, which has climbed all the way up to over $440. It's been an amazing run for Apple. And of course, the question here today is where does it go from here? Uh, not only long term, but short term, the rest of the year, all the stuff that's going on in the world. How does that affect Apple's position in the marketplace? We'll take a look at the different categories of products. We'll take a look at the different regions that they sell in to get a full view of Apple stock going forward. As a reminder, my stock picks and projections are just my opinion for your entertainment. Please talk to a financial professional before investing in the stock market. That being said, if you enjoy stock market analysis, going deep on stocks like Apple, talking about personal finance topics, all those things, then please subscribe to the 40 Finance channel. Thank you to everybody who's supported the channel so far. All right, one thing to get out of the way, I did a video on Apple back in the end of May, and I was convinced at that time, given some of their weakness, that at $320, there wasn't a lot of room to run for Apple. And just so we can put it on the scoreboard, I was definitely wrong in that one. Share prices obviously climbed over $100 uh, between May 28th and whatever we're on today, August 3rd or August 4th. So uh, chalk up an L for me. I just wanna be transparent about that before we jump into this stock. And the rationale that I had back then uh, was you know some negativity in China, particularly from a year-over-year -year sales perspective. Also, they were anticipating iPhone product delays because of all their manufacturing in China. Uh, that's not a good thing if you can't get your new products over to companies. Um, and then you obviously had the COVID economy, and then the sort of wild card was this new 5G world. How many people were gonna wait to buy a new phone until 5G was rolled out, particularly in the United States. Well, of those four big concerns, uh, you know, some of them never even came close to fruition. Uh, there wasn't much in the way of immediate delays in production. Uh, the COVID concerns, uh, apparently everyone took their stimulus check and, and bought an iPhone, because uh, that was a zero issue. And then the 5G, uh, coming up on the horizon, uh, at least Americans didn't seem to really care. They just went out and bought whatever they wanted. And then on the flip side, we'll see in a minute that uh, China had a minor bounce back in their sales performance. So all in all, my bare thesis points across the board, wrong, wrong, wrong. So now I'm gonna go back to the drawing board, dig into Apple from its most recent earnings, and let you know how I think about things today, but obviously uh, my opinion in the past was not correct. All right, so if you follow Apple stock, you know that this most recent earnings uh, call was quite positive. I'll just read off a couple of the bullet points from uh, this release here on Yahoo, and revenue up 559 billion versus 52 billion expected. Again, uh, this is the difference between expected revenue and analysts expected. Uh, so there's a little bit of a catch there because you know analysts change their expectations based on the world. So when we get into things like COVID and pandemics, um, it's not necessarily that Apple is comping or bringing in more sales than the year before. They're going against analyst expectations, which is in this case, lower. Earnings per share 258 versus 207. iPhone revenue 26.42 billion. Services revenue 13 point billion versus 13.1 expected. And accessory 6.5 billion versus 6.1 billion expected. All right, taking a look at the stock today. This is before the market opens. You landed at 438.66 at the end of the day. And we have a 52 week range on Apple of 193 all the way up to 446. Your 193, no surprise, was in March of last year. P ratio today of 33.27. And you do get that small dividend with Apple 0.75% 
as of today's price. Looking at the top of the board, forward PE goes down to 27.47. They're trailing 12 months revenue at $273 billion. Just an amazing number uh, to think about that, you know, that these guys are driving. Uh, cash on hand of 93 billion, debt load 122 billion. Uh, I would say manageable on the debt side, always trying to look at that uh, debt versus cash versus revenue. And I think in Apple, while 122 billion is a pretty big number, they're driving the sort of liquidity and cash on hand that they can cover their obligations there all at one time if needed. All right, so like I always do, let's go back and look at the valuations, historical valuations, to see what was Apple's valuation in the past compared to where it is today. This gives us some idea like, hey, is this stock price of $440 um, a good deal compared to other prices that have been offered for Apple. All right, annual chart here, and you see that I've highlighted uh, a few of the rows. You go you read this one from left to right, and current trailing PE of 3304. We go back through the past several years, and it is notably higher. Uh, the last highest point of 20.41 was on September 30th of 2018. So definitely running hot on that row. Then you look at forward PE and you can see that uh, pretty much the same story. The last highest forward PE on an annual standpoint actually came last year at the end of September. Not much different on price to sales and price to book. We are at uh, the high point of the past several years in those valuations. So at the end of the day, if you're looking at things from a valuation metric, uh, Apple is trading uh, much higher than it has traded over the past several years. All right, so now we'll take a look at how some of the top rated analysts and tip ranks. Think about Apple. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about TipRank service, I'm a paid subscriber. My affiliate link is in the description if you're interested in supporting the channel and checking out the service. Uh, basically, TipRanks makes it really easy for us to sort through analysts uh, by their best performing status and get a feel for what they're saying about Apple. Works really well on a mega cap stock like Apple because you have dozens and dozens of analysts who follow this stock and publish opinions on it. And with tip ranks, we can sort of sort by uh, their historical track record and put it all in one place to digest easily. All right, so you know we put all these names and faces up on the board and the, on the left side. I don't worry too much about you know who these people are, to, to be honest with you. It's just more uh, from a top level perspective, we just see that at least in tip rank system, these folks have uh, historically done well in their approach to analyzing stocks. We're more concerned about the yellow columns that we have highlighted here. And you see from a rating standpoint, you've got almost all buys. Every single one of these analysts updated right after earnings. You do have two holds in there at $400, uh, but mostly buys. And I would say from an eyeball average standpoint, we are really in that sort of 410 to 420 range looking ahead. So most analysts are saying not a ton of room to run. You've got a couple at 480, 475, but most folks, if you did an average of this position, uh, would probably land around 420. All right, so now we're gonna go deep and talk about the performance for Apple across their product categories and perhaps most importantly for me, to take a look at their regions, their sales regions, the countries that they sell in, to see how this year's stacking up, uh, and then compare that even further into how they did this most recent quarter. All right, I made uh, some attempt to color code this chart, and I'll do my best to talk through it without having your eyes go in circles. Uh, the bottom line, let's start at the top. You see where it says nine months ended. 
Uh, that's highlighted in yellow. So nine months ended. We're going to look at that mostly because it gives us three quarters of their fiscal year and see where things stand. You can see that products and services both comping well over the same period of last year and we do have sales growth of 209 billion versus 196 billion, uh, same stretch to last year. The thing that I like to focus on or, or draw the most assessment from comes down further and you see in that blue box there, this is where we're looking at the sales by segment or region as I call it. Take a glance off to the left of the blue box and you see the regions we're talking about. First one is America, then Europe, China, Japan, etc. Follow that along back to the blue box. We have America plus 6.2 billion, Europe plus 6.4 billion, China minus 200 million, Japan minus 130 million. That's where I was concerned on our last review of Apple stock. But if you go slightly to the left on China and Japan, you see that this past quarter, while they were trending behind for the nine month standpoint, this past quarter they made a little bit of a gain. So plus 200 million for China year over year in this past quarter, they're still down minus 200 million for the nine month period, but they did make some progress. Japan plus 900 million in this quarter. Uh, it still takes them to minus 130 million for the nine month period, but there was definitely positivity in those regions. And that of course uh, destroyed my uh, sort of bull case where I thought that you know China and Japan would be sort of the Achilles heel. Uh, it turns out that Apple turned that around. Not necessarily positive for the year and I would still be concerned with these negative comps through a, through a nine month cycle. However, you do see some positivity. All right, if you can take your eyes down to the orange box near the bottom of the page, this is where we're in net sales by category. And here I do have some concerns, although it's mostly positive. The first line at 111 million is iPhone sales. Now, iPhone sales, 111 billion, pretty freaking good, right? Nobody's going to worry about Apple trying to find their next meal. Uh, on a comp standpoint, that's only plus two billion. Not a monstrous amount of growth, but to be honest, that's a pretty big number. Mac sales, 19.5 billion versus 18.7. And then you get into iPad, 16.9 versus 16.6. So sort of mediocrity or small growth, I would say. Um, again, you know, those are we're playing with big numbers here. Uh, so to be fair, Apple's still making comp progress. But where the most interesting thing is, so right below in the green box, we're looking at wearables and services compared to the kind of traditional segments, iPhone, Mac, and iPad. You've got wearables plus 4.8 billion and services plus 5.5 billion. So huge growth in those segments compared to uh, the three above it. And finally, in that purple box that I highlighted, out of the plus 13.7 billion that Apple has comped year over year over this nine month period, 10.3 billion of that is from wearables and services. So a lot of people, when they talk about Apple stock, they're infatuated with the iPhone and 5G and blah, blah, blah. But at the bottom line right now, through nine months, uh, we are seeing wearables and services, AKA the AirPods, the Apple Watches, the AirPods Pro. That's what's driving things right now. Okay, that's where the majority of the growth is. It's not some iPhone, it's not some technical discussion on, on what uh, chips are in the next Mac. Uh, Apple sales right now are coming from headphones, watches, and the App Store. 
So that's important to note as an investor how much growth you think are left in those categories. All right, lots of words again, but I'll try to go through here as quickly as possible. This is a summary of the regions. So at the top, Americas, that is 45% of 2020 sales so far. On a quarterly basis, Americas were up primarily to higher net sales of services and iPad. On the nine month basis, there it's up for higher net sales of services, wearables, home and accessories. Again, AirPods, watches. Now we go to Europe which, you know, relatively shocking to me, Europe's 24% of sales compared to China and Japan that we'll talk about soon. But, um, you know, Europe, there's might be something there uh, that could alleviate some of these China concerns that I have. But bottom line, in the third quarter, Europe was up primarily on iPhone, iPad, wearables, home, and accessories. And not highlighted there, but the nine month period, it's basically iPhone and wearables. So Europe of all places is doing well in iPhone. Uh, so could that be a secret for Apple to cure some of the concerns in China? We'll have to see. Down to China, 15% of 2020 sales. You had one good quarter for China so far, due primarily to higher net sales of iPad and services, partially offset by lower net sales of iPhone. That was my concern. I did not project though that iPads of all things and services, which is gonna be mostly the app store, uh, would be able to cover lower net sales of iPhone. So shame on me. Year over year, greater China net sales decreased in the first nine months due primarily to lower net sales of iPhones. So yes, iPhone is an issue right now in China we will see if 5G versions or new versions can fix that. Finally, down to Japan, we got 7% of sales. Year over year, Japan net sales decreased during the first nine months due primarily to lower net sales of iPhone. All right, so hey, I got one thing right, and that is iPhone in the Far East is not going super well. What I didn't project out of Apple, and perhaps as a testament of the pandemic environment, would be that wearables and services would basically cover their ass. Uh, and it certainly did here. All right, so what's the bottom line for Apple looking ahead? Uh, number one, do you believe that watches and headphones and app uh, store sales can continue uh, to cover the shortcomings in iPhone? That's the answer. Uh, if you do believe that, then there's a lot of promise for Apple in the future from a comp standpoint. Number two, we've already talked China and Japan. Uh, I'll say I was right, but I was also wrong. iPhone's an issue in China and Japan. Uh, however, they were able to cover it with selling other categories. Bottom line though, is iPhone sales are still the big unlock for Apple. They've got to hit the product releases and 5G integration in the next quarter if they want to drive big time results. All right, so my take at the end of the day, this stock is definitely running ahead of its historical valuations. You are definitely buying high right now for Apple. So if you have an established position, of course you can hold right? Apple's not going away. They make billions of dollars. They will do good things over the next three to five years. No brainer. If you're starting a new position, however, uh, while I've been wrong in the past, I would still be inclined to wait. Uh, 440 is not an attractive price and I would at least wait for a red day before I started adding shares to my Apple position. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this Apple stock analysis. Please give me a like and subscribe if you did. We'll see you on the next video.